Well, what's going on, guys? How's our mortal corpse feeling today? Yeah, well, that's just about the same thing there. No matter how many times I keep rearranging a damn bed, it's still trying to kill me. Yeah, my back's on fire again. It's uh, 7.42 in the morning West Coast time, March 2nd, 2024. Shoutouts to the Boa Fifth. And shoutouts to Artist Recovery and everybody else. Uh, not a zombie, just a guy in pain at this point over here, but after seeing some of the headlines, I'm not quite sure if I should be back uh, back to the land of the living right now. I've been seeing a few things on the on the news that still rattles my cage. Well, you're a little late concerning about the damn fire tips. You're about, what, four or five days late on this? I hate to say it, pal, but you're slipping. Not to mention... Uh, not just a news article concerning about how to deal with the fires. The aftermath of the of the fire happening right now is it's devastating to the Texas economy. Cattle being destroyed left and right is, is leaving cattle and ranchers completely devastated right now. They're going to need assistance with the Red Cross the so and the Salvation Army and other volunteer groups out there. Uh, Red Cross is still accepting donations at this point. Salvation Army is still trying to get their uh, assets rolling to help the people relocate if, if possible. The fire is completely out of control at this point. And I think they got, I don't know. I haven't checked at this point what the... Find out about the fire uh, department of National Park Service. Department of Interior. I know the state of Texas is fighting it like crazy. They're going to be dealing with um, little uh, limited success at this point. Let's see if state of, uh, department of yeah 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 yeah. One second, I gotta put this on pause real fast. My computer's freaking. Sorry, I have been doing a little searching on the internet. Um, I'm gonna have to get some of these links and put them into my video as I put them out there. Uh, according to the Texas A&M Forest Service incident viewer that they have, they got several of them that are still active. Uh, the Magenta Fire, they called it, has about 3,200, uh, almost 3,300 acres uh, destroyed already and 85% containment. Uh, the mill, uh, let's see, what else did it get? Trying to get into here. Grapevine Creek Fire, they have 30,000 acreage, 60% contained. Magenta fire that they called it. Almost 33. I think I said something about that one. Yeah, I did. All right. Windy Deuce. Uh, 142K acreage. And about 60% containment. The 387 Reamer. Hutchison. About 2,000 acreage. 10% containment. And a big monkey. And that's about 10 mil. Smokehouse, and it got 15% containment. So, yeah, we're talking about a week. Uh, another week of battling this monstrosity here. It's one thing being in small town fires. It's one thing seeing a town go up. It's a, it's a, or seeing your local areas of the landscape that you lived in for a hell of a long while. I lived in mountainous regions. 
And it's terrifying enough anyway, seeing all that fire going up around a, an enclosed bowl. This is flatland territory. Putting up Google Maps just to help reorient me about what I'm looking at here. You know, I'm grateful for the Google Maps because they help me out with my uh, with my understanding about landscapes and stuff. I'll shift over to the Texas Panhandle. Uh, let me switch over to layers. Because I need to see the state layers. I need to see where I'm looking at here. That's the that's one particular layers. What I need now is terrain. I need to look at the terrain map and see how that is. My God, all I see is traffic, and that's it. Oh, the computer was having a hard time trying to. Put it into here. It's just not acting as it should. There are some mountainous regions in the area. I gotta get into the satellite. I want to see the satellite better. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Some flatland area, but a bit of mountain regions and. About it. Uh, put on a, f a wildfire map so I can see some of the towns have already been Canadian, already been hit. Sun is getting nailed by this one. Smokehouse is wi very widespread. Something's been updated in about 24 minutes ago on it. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get any information about this. Well, for they have a lot of updates on this answer. I'm trying to get the. Uh, I'm trying to get further information on this monster, if I can. But it has spread. I mean, there's a lot of widespread action happening on it. The towns of Stonet, Pinons, uh, Pimmons. I'm sorry. But. It's a lot of flat land, a lot of farm community out there, ranching. Some mountains or hillsides that may or may not act as a buffer. Uh, speaking from a guy who's been living in Southern California, is not tech from Texas at this point. When winds kick up, the fires have a tendency of going up hillsides. They don't like to go down, but they will go down, especially if the winds are driving them and if the fire creates their own weather patterns. Uh, here in California, especially in Southern California, when the fires kick in to mountainous regions and not to mention the forestry, they kind of create their own little weather out there where uh, vortexes are created, fire tornadoes. And we're not talking about something on, on Fire Country television show. I've never seen it before. I've seen too much of the real stuff happening these days. And it's it's just rattling. It is very, very rattling. Seeing this situation, it leaves me with... I can't tell you what kind of screwed up feelings I've got right now as it scares the living crap out of me. It's the only thing I can say. 
they only got about 15% containment reported so far. And it's, it's grown, but they're trying to maintain it. I mean, being out in the county of Hutchison, it reminds me too much of the stuff we keep dealing with out here. But not to mention, I've seen seen the reports, and I think the fires had already gone down months ago, thank God, in Canada, where some of that acreage had been burned, and they were having a hell of a time for months trying to struggle for that fire. This is up in Canada region. And the smoke came down into um, our northern borders, smoking them out, not to mention the, the cities because of the prevailing winds. One, one is trying to track the uh, weather. One has to keep track of these things, where the prevailing winds are coming from. We have different conditions out here. When uh, there's enough heated uh, and high pressure coming in, uh, pressure gradients would force the fire uh, to come closer to other communities we would get the smoke throughout the south line on that one. If it was really hot and heavy and bring our forces down left and right. There had been reports I'd, I heard about a long time ago that the U.S. forest um, idea was just to let things burn. Controlled burns were one thing. So we had allow new growth to come in. It's one way I think nature tries to control itself, but sometimes with the growth that we have and growth of mankind going through areas that only nature would occupy, we're devastating that one there too. I can't tell you how much devastation we had throughout the Sierras when we actually had our own fires out here. The smoke would be drifting downwards because of the pressure gradients would get flowing through and then... Uh, where I live in is the Antelope Valley. We're in the desert region. But we are susceptible to smoke. We're susceptible to smoke coming through. If there'll be brush fires, um, we're well aware of it because we see the smoke all around. Even I get afraid of it. There have been controlled burns on the Edwards Air Force Base, and sometimes they need outside help to come in and take care of it, but they're trying to knock off all the shrubbery that they can. They let the public know through their website about the controlled burns. It's the out-of-control burns that you have no issue, that you, that I have an issue with. I would think I would be safe enough in the uh, desert region for that kind of activity. I look outside my windows and go outside the doors and I would see landscape that's ready to be torched. If we didn't get enough moisture in there to soften them up a bit, they would be dry and brittle. But even after rain season and then we get a uh, the conditions change into heat, it sucks out the moisture, leaves up the dried vegetation and what worries me sometimes is either man causing a fire one way or another by his own activities or <sniffs> once in a great while we'll get lightning storms coming through instability air so the atmosphere flows in through we would have the clash of air pressures and therefore forcing winds through through us or uh, high pressure dealing with the instability moving things I just have to keep paying attention to the damn winds we would have every so often wind reports of just how much we're getting out here blown it's making a winch How we get weather reports on these things? Every time we have strong winds happening above 40 degrees, we'd have Weather Service Hanford telling us and flashing us warnings about 
high wind warnings. Anything about 40 and 50 degrees, some people will probably say, eh, that's nothing. Yeah, well, if we get about 60 at that at that point, I get a little something on that one. Then I start worrying whether or not if we're going to get any uh, dust storm activity. We've had a few out here in the desert regions over the past 20 years. And it's something to go through. But dust is not fire. But it almost comes close. We still have the hillsides. So, boys and girls, if you've been noticing on some of my channels, if I'm going to have to direct you to geography here, shall we open up our books on whatever electronic devices we have to the maps of Google? And the first map we'll be hitting is basically your home state, your home area. Now, I'll probably kindly direct you to Texas and see the fire areas that they had because Google Maps has been um, instrumental in the areas that they have for uh, fire information. Show you the panhandle and what it looks like and what it may uh, happen to Oklahoma if the fire continues without any issues to stop it with. We have landscapes out there. Um, you might have it on traffic and I would suggest for you to put it on satellite view. You can see the mountainous regions. Of course I would prefer the terrain but then again if I switched on the terrain I'm looking at basically flatland area here. I could see a state definition, the state line definition there. And I would see certain ridges, maybe, certain areas that may look like they're going to be mountainous or not, but the rest of it is all flatland. So if I switch back over to the uh, satellite view, I will definitely see it. And then put up the, uh, well, keep the fire off, keep the fire thing off. But I would look at the upper regions and how they're how they're being affected. That's a lot of intercommunicate. Uh, that's a lot of intercommunity uh, activity with the interstates and free uh, places. So yes, it does concern me. I said before, uh, deeper in the state of Texas, I've got family and friends that I worry about. Now, this is going to be showing you if you happen to kick, click on the wild file area and you would see the stretch of where some of the fires are and where they were days ago. And right now, Smokehouse is the main monkey. And it's consumed a hell of a lot. Now, if I wanted to, I could switch it over to California, my home state. I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it my home state out here. We haven't had that much activity in a long while, thank God. And I'll show you the uh, valley that I live in. For me, I worry more about the geography, uh, for the geology situation, than I do anything else right now. When the winds go through, they're usually blowing and taking out areas uh, going going across the mountain regions and going through the canyons and forcing more uh, more traffic and more people to have more issues, including going through the Central Valley. But you would think that in our funnel area that I look at, that my home place of Rosemond would be affected. Maybe, maybe not. We do get about 40 or 50 out here, but according to what uh, the alerts have been sent out from uh, the Weather Service Station Hanford, they indicated that high wind warning remains in effect until 8 p.m. Sunday. 
Southwest winds, 30 to 40 miles per hour, would gust up to 65. Well, 30, uh, 30 to 40 miles sustain. I look outside, and, and yeah, they do have the gust hitting left and right. Now, if the gust happened to reach 70, I'll be a little bit concerned about it. But 65, I'm not so much concerned about it. Not until we started having the power lines being affected left and right. And then, I'm also worried about whether or not the scrub in the area is going to be burning things out. But we don't have that much scrub out here. We have basically desert region. I had to show you these things. If you kind of scroll into the map where it says Antelope Valley to the wedge, and then look at Edwards Air Force Base, the Dry Lake Edmund, just the dry, arid desert region there. They don't get fires. There's nothing out there to burn. But in between and in, in, in close to our town, we do have areas that are burnable. We do. We have dry vegetation. You'll be discolored, but it's still out there. When Edwards has um, their fires going on, it's usually right next to our, our town or a little inwards. Uh, the dry lake bed will have some patches left and right that'll have a lot of scrub and they'll burn the thing out. But it looks like a dry area, doesn't it? As I said before, I'm more worried about the scrub that surrounds our town. I mean, it's great for dirt bike riding, but all it takes is sparks from uh, the equipment we throw out there just to have our fun. It causes a little bit of a burn or two. Given the right conditions regarding the winds, we would feel some of the winds coming through. Even last night, we had some of the winds coming through. We were fortunate enough that our power lines are still up and everything's okay. But this doesn't alleviate the fact that we can still be burned out of here. I look at the smokehouse. And they have plenty of brush and plenty of shrapnel um, to uh, burn like crazy. When we get the messages from the weather stations out here in California. They would tell us that the impacts, they say, will blow down trees and power lines. Well, yeah, if it's strong enough and the power poles and the trees are not being uprooted. Widespread power outages are expected, but we haven't hit them yet. We haven't got them yet. Travel will be difficult, especially for higher vehicles. What they're talking about is when the uh, freeways are elevated a bit and we have the high, high, you know, we have the truckers and we have campers. And going through the desert region, there's possible chances of that being knocked around. We have construction happening between uh, J and K Avenue in Lancaster, or from Palmdale actually, stretching all the way over to Mojave. So our traffic is really screwed up. Not much chance for escape or not much chance for things to get knocked around, but they can get knocked around a, a bit. And it makes me concerned about um, how we're doing. But regardless, we have no fires. And I'm not uh, dismissing the idea. I'm not. If it gets dry enough in certain canyon areas, including if there's a community out there called the Hatchapi, that's between Central Valley and the Antelope Valley. That area I get worried about. Think of it as a choke point, especially when we need to get in and out of the Central Valley. If one part of the mountainside region gets torched, they got no place to go, except to the, to the ends. And if they're blocked some way, then they're trapped. The same thing happens for the grapevine. Our state, our country, our world's turning into a 24-7 wildfire event. We all have to have things ready to go. We have to. You put your um, 
a bit of emergency food, a bit of emergency water. If you got pets, have some pet food there. Medications, documentation. Keep your, you know, I'm not saying put it into your gold bag, but some people actually put credit cards and other cash and stuff, just in case. If we do get a power outage, cards ain't going to be useful, except for just for flashing at people. So green's appropriate. So it's jump change. Expendable. Heavy as hell. Good equalizer upside of face. Well, I've heard about it a long time ago. Roll a pennies in the hand and just... Well, I'm not going to demonstrate it anyway. But they're worthy. I mean, they're worthwhile for money. Take a long time to get processed, especially roll of pennies. I'm thinking about the smaller thing, but I'm also start thinking about the larger issues that happen. Uh, we'll talk about that one a little bit later in another video, I guess. So we'll just cut this one short.